Hey everybody, this is Jeremy Dunham, editor-in-chief of the IGN PlayStation team. And I'm very excited because today we get to talk about Resistance, Fall of Man, which is Sony's killer application for the PS3, and yes, it really is a killer app. But why is Resistance a killer app? Well, because it's far and away the best game that we've played out of all the PlayStation 3 titles we've sampled so far. One of the reasons for this is it has a top-grade developer. Insomniac Games is the same team that brought Spyro the Dragon to life several years ago, and the same guys that gave us the Ratchet and Clank series, which is a big favorite here at the IGN offices. What's unique about Fall of Man for Insomniac, though, is the fact that it's actually completely different gameplay-wise than the last couple of games, where they're typically known for their mascot-type platformer mixed with actioners. This is a straight first-person shooter, and not only is it a first-person shooter, but it's a very good one. The story revolves around Nathan Hale, a U.S. sergeant who comes into a war that the British are having with aliens known as the Chimera. It's set in an alternate 1951, one where World War II never happened, and one that sees the alien race of the Chimera taking over all of Europe. Britain is now mankind's last hope to actually save that continent, and that's where you come in as the player. But unlike most first-person shooters, the story in Resistance is actually very important to how events unfold, and it's not just an excuse to go out and shoot things. In fact, the game's length is really surprising. It goes anywhere between 12 and 16 hours in length, and you can play through a second time or a third time, or however many times you want, because Insomniac has actually included a bunch of visual clues and cool documents that provide a backstory and a better overarching mythos for the universe they're trying to create. Now, at the forefront of any first-person shooter is strong AI and good weapons, and those are two things that Resistance actually really has in spades. Number one, the weapons, of course, is something that Insomniac does well. They proved that with Ratchet and & Clank and all its sequels. It's no exception here either. Every weapon that you get in Fall of Man has some kind of unique twist on the typical weapon of its sort. So while you might grab a shotgun, hitting L1 will use a double-barrel shotgun. But if you grab the bullseye rifle, you can use your alternate fire to actually draw your rounds to your initial target. Little things like this make the weapons in Resistance a lot of fun to play and gives you reason to switch between them. And like I said earlier, the AI is just as good as the weapons. They take cover, they attack in groups, they learn your patterns, they do everything you'd expect an opponent to do if you were in an actual firefight with them. Very impressive. Now, with as many different shooters as there are out there, the big question is what kind of shooter is Resistance? Is it a Twitch shooter along the lines of somewhere like Unreal Tournament, or is it more of a tactical thing like Rainbow Six? The truth is it actually leans more towards the Twitch shooter. It's kind of like a cross between Call of Duty, Unreal Tournament, and the first-person shooter option if you played original Ratchet & Clank. The stage design is actually very linear. You can do some exploration, and you'll need to if you want to find the secrets, but the game is always pushing you forward in a straight path so that you understand exactly what it is you have to do next. It's very cinematic, and it works well for the story that Insomniac is trying to tell. Of all the gameplay elements that make Resistance so fun, though, above everything else, it's how it controls. Insomniac has done a fantastic job of understanding how to make a first-person shooter on a console, and it uses the new six-axis controller extremely well in aiming and in understanding what you have to do with your weapons. They've even thrown in a couple of really nice alternative methods to the typical map or stat checking sequence. Instead of hitting select or another face button, you can actually tilt your controller left or right to bring up those screens on the fly. It keeps your eyes on the screen and you don't have to worry about fiddling with any buttons. It's a nice little inclusion and just one example of how they've really focused on making the controller an extension of yourself. Graphically, Resistance isn't the best looking next generation game out there, but it still does what it does very well. There's a ton of soldiers on the screen at once, along with the Chimera, not to mention explosions and vehicles, and it's all sorts of fire and everything else you can imagine going on in a hectic battlefield. What makes Resistance unique, though, is the fact that it has all this going on without a single hitch in the frame rate. I never experienced slowdown once from start to finish in single player or multiplayer, and that's an impressive feat, especially when you have this much activity. You're also never going to see the same environments twice. Every stage is different from one another, and while they might have some thematic similarities, each one of them has its own personality, its own design, and they stand out very well. Now, I freely admit that there have been plenty of shooters out there that have offered a lot of these things before, but what really makes Resistance shine is the fact that its multiplayer is so fantastic. In all, you're looking at eight different modes. You've got Capture the Flag, Deathmatch, you've got some team matches in there, you've got alterations known as Breach and Meltdown. There's so many variations on popular multiplayer options that there's really something for everybody in here, and it's really hard to get tired. What's even more impressive is I've played this game with 40 people online simultaneously multiple times, and very rarely could I ever see a single technical problem while doing so. You will see the occasional draw distance problem or some collision issues here and there, and there are some areas in each stage that are a little too inactive for their own good. You might run into a couple of dead spots before hitting your next big action point. 
The only other real issue I have as a fan of the story is that the ending really never ties up all the loose ends. Obviously, this is built as a franchise and there's going to be a future for Resistance, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more satisfaction with how things ultimately played out. But you know what? I can live with it because everything about Resistance from the beginning to end screams must play. It's a fun game in both single player and multiplayer. It's the must own title for the system if you pick it up on launch day or any other month after that, and it easily stands up to any of its competitors' multiplayer options any day of the week. In short, I love this game and I think you will too. Go out and buy it.